Orson Welles. I knew when I saw the script, the script was written by James Ramsey Ullman, who wrote a, a book called White Tower about climbing a mountain in the Himalayas, or Himalayas, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And uh, I asked him if he'd write the script, and he came back with a typical geographic script. I said, oh, no, romanticize this thing, will you? He said, oh, God, I'm glad you asked me to do this. So he did, came back with a magnificent script. And Wells was in Europe, and he couldn't come back to this country because he only owed the Internal Revenue Service so much money. <laughs> I'll tell you how I got him out of that. But uh, I called him up, and I said, are you interested in, I'll pay you 15,000 bucks if you narrate this. He said, sure. He said, you know, I'm a mountain climber. He was, too. He's a mountain climber. So I went over to Rome, and I met him, and we did it in about four days. And it was an RCA studio in, in Rome. And uh, it just became a smash. Jane Goodall became even bigger. And, and we used Orson for about uh, the first six shows, I think. But what I did was... Well, how, did you, how did you first think of Orson Welles as a narrator? I had always thought of Orson Welles. Uh, I heard, as I told you way back, the War of the Worlds. But then I used to look at, when I was looking for voices, I'd look at army films, I'd look at all kind of films. He did a lot of work just to make money in Europe to, so he could earn enough to come back to the States. He was running around with... Uh, who was a girl? I can't think of her name. Very well-known star at the time. But then he ditched her, and he finally married his third wife, to whom he stayed married. Uh, I had more fun with Orson Welles. I used to take an extra week to go over there. I'd always fudge it that I needed 10 days to narrate it. Now it took about three days. Then he and I'd wander around Rome and Paris and London and Madrid and all over the place. I had an awful lot of fun with him. And he was so fat, he weighed about 300 pounds at the time. I once wrote down what he ate for lunch. We went to a fancy restaurant in Paris. He had a double, two plates of a double roll of oysters. Then he had a steak, followed by another steak, and then a chicken, and then dessert, all washed down by a whole what do you call that big thing of champagne? Um, Whatever the big bottle is, I forget the name of it. And he drank it out of a big bottle, and he was just an—he was an incredible man, and bright as a dollar. And he liked me, and I liked him. We got along from the first minute we met. And he used to send me telegrams. You know, you send a cable, meet you, Penn Station, four thirty this afternoon. He started off, dear Bob, <laughs> which tickled me, <laughs> tickled everybody.